Hi everyone, I'm Ken with Orion Telescopes and Binoculars, and in this video we're going to be taking a closer look at the Orion XX14G. It's a 14-inch Dobsonian reflector, but I think as you'll soon see, it's not your average Dobsonian. It's got a full go-to system, truss system, so you can break it down into smaller pieces, and so we're going to look at some of the features and advantages of uh, this design. All right, let's take a closer look. One advantage of our 14-inch uh, reflector here is the height of the eyepiece. On a lot of large Dobsonian telescopes uh, in this range, the, the focal ratio can be big enough where the eyepiece is actually fairly high in the sky, so you have to bring a step stool with you or a little ladder. And in the dark, at night, when you're tired, that can actually be kind of dangerous. So we made the telescope f4.6, so that brings the eyepiece down just enough where, uh, well, I'm, I'm six foot tall, and the eyepiece is pretty much right at my level when I'm pointing straight up in the sky. And then, of course, if you're looking lower down in the sky, the eyepiece will be correspondingly lower. But a very convenient angle without needing to bring equipment with you to get up to reach the eyepiece. Uh, speaking of eyepieces, let me tell you what it comes with. You get two eyepieces, a 35 millimeter 2 inch, that's the low power wide field view, so that's great for the big deep sky objects and getting a bigger swath of sky all at once. Uh, it comes with a 12.5 illuminated plossel, which is a, a crosshair eyepiece. So that's actually really nice for doing the computer alignment. When you want to make sure the star is dead center in the field of view, that eyepiece uh, really helps you out. The focuser that it comes with, it's dual speed, uh, a reduction gear on here. So at high power, you can really finely tune the focus for the best planetary detail. You get a finder scope as well, one of the easy finders. It's a zero power reflex sight, so you see a little dot floating in the sky over the object you want to see. There's some optional accessories you can get for this. Um, we have a case set. When this breaks down, it comes into a couple different pieces, so the, the cases help uh, transport it all together safely. There's a case for the bottom tube section, uh, a smaller case for the top tube section, and then a case that fits the trusses once they're uh, rolled up. Yeah, it makes it very convenient. We also have a shroud available. Now, if you're in a dark sky site with no street lights or neighbor's lights, you probably don't need it. But if you're in your backyard and you've got a street light shining down at an angle this way through the trusses, well, that light can bounce around inside the tube and reduce your contrast. So the shroud is basically a big sock which fits over the top, comes down from here to this point, and encloses the short of the uh, trusses here to block out any uh, ambient light. So uh, some nice accessories to have to go along with the scope if you're going to be transporting it around or you've got some light pollution in your area. Now this telescope is a full go-to system, so it has motors uh, in both axes, so it will uh, automatically track and go to the objects left and right, and up and down. So, fully robotic. The computer hand controller has uh, over 42,000 objects in the database. Once you've done a simple star alignment, you punch in the object you want to see, hit enter, and the telescope will slew robotically to the object. It'll find it, it will center it, and then, since there are motors inside, it will continue to track it. So that's another nice advantage over a standard Dobsonian, where you have to move the scope manually uh, to recenter the object as the Earth rotates. This will fully uh, uh, interact with the uh, motors to follow the object through the night sky as the Earth rotates underneath it. Now there's one other really big advantage to a system like this over many of the go-to systems out there. On, on many go-to systems, once you have aligned the computer, it knows where something is in the sky, if you were to grab the telescope manually, meaning not using the hand controller here, if you were to grab it manually and move it like this, the computer doesn't know you've moved it, so the alignment is now shot, and you're going to have, you're going to, have to redo the alignment. Well, this is a closed-loop system. It uses a dual encoder uh, system uh, inside, so it knows that I've just moved that manually, even though I've already aligned on some stars. So let's say I'm looking at Jupiter right here, and then I notice something over there. Oh, what's that? Well, I don't want to look it up on the computer. I just want to move it manually, so I just bring it over there to look at something. And now I want to go back to Jupiter. I'll just hit Jupiter back on the screen, hit enter, it'll go right back to Jupiter uh, because it's never lost track of where it is. So that, that's a big advantage over many go-to systems on the market. So you can think of this as a, a dual-purpose Dobsonian telescope. It's a computerized 
telescope. So with a power source here, I've got a 12 volt uh, DC power source. Uh, we've got options for AC as well if you wanted to plug it into your outlet in the backyard. If you're away from all that, you didn't bring your uh, battery or you're not near the car, well you can just unplug it, turn it off completely, and then just use it as a standard Dobsonian because it still has those Dobsonian motions, nice and smooth, up and down, left and right. So it can be used with or without power uh, any way you want. Okay, let's look a little closer at the truss design of this Dobsonian telescope. Um, as you can see, it's an eight truss system. So there's four connected truss sets uh, together. So this is one set of two trusses. The advantage of an eight truss system, this is a true truss. It's, it's very rigid. And uh, the advantage is over some other designs that might have like one pole where like the tube collapses down or slides down, much more rigid. When you take this off, yes, it's another piece to take off, but it breaks this thing down into a smaller piece. This comes off. And when you put it back together, it's very well aligned. These, these truss poles retain their alignment when you put it back together very well. Plus, when you're moving this around, left and right, up and down, there's absolutely no flex whatsoever in an eight truss system. In, in fewer truss poles or in just the, the stocks that come up and down, there's a lot more flex. So when you move it, you might be tweaking the alignment, the, the, the collimation a little bit, and it's just not as repeatable. So again, a very good advantage uh, for an eight pole truss system. I want to show you one of the trusses. It comes apart, no tools necessary. So this is one of the truss pole sets. Uh, it uses captive hardware, so you're not going to lose the bolts in the grass. And when it goes back together, like I said, no tools necessary. Just attach each one and you're ready to go. In addition to the tube coming apart because of the trusses, uh, we designed the base as well to come apart into much more manageable pieces. This is a fairly heavy piece altogether and fairly large, so fitting in the car might be kind of difficult. But if you look close, these uh, uh, thumb knobs that are uh, placed all around the base, uh, unscrew them, uh, you don't need any tools to do it, and the base comes apart into four pieces, the two side walls, the front brace, and then the bottom assembly. Let me show you with the side panel right here. So here we have the base fully broken down into its constituent components. The bottom baseboard in the center, the two side panels on, on either side, the front brace is uh, in front there, the assembly screws, and then on the left side the hand controller and azimuth cable. And here we have the optical tube broken apart into its pieces. On the right side we've got the lower optical tube assembly, the, the primary mirror and tube. On the left side, we have the upper cage, the secondary mirror and focuser assembly. And in the middle, we've got the four truss pole assemblies. A 14-inch reflector like this pulls in a lot of light. Uh, it's a very big mirror. Uh, if you want to think of it as percentages, uh, compared to a 12, it's 36% more light. And compared to a 10-inch reflector, it's almost double, like 96% more light. So there's, just, there's a ton of light coming in here. So for Deep sky objects, nebulae, galaxies, you're going to be looking at very faint ones, or the brighter ones you're going to see in even more detail than you could with something smaller. All the Messier objects in very good detail, hundreds if not thousands of the NGCs the, the getting down to fainter things as well. Not only that, but 14 inch has a lot of resolution as well, so when you're looking at a planet at very high power, Jupiter, the cloud bands on Jupiter, the rings around Saturn, you're going to see quite a bit of detail. And since it automatically tracks, it's, it's very easy compared to a regular dot to keep it right in the center of the field and not have to worry about recentering it constantly. So, very good advantages for uh, deep sky and planetary detail. 
All right, well, there we have it, the XX14G. I hope we've given you some uh, ideas as to the features, the benefits, uh, maybe the advantages of this over something else. And uh, I hope it helps you make a better decision. All right, thank you very much. Clear skies.